Korea, along with everybody interested in the Korean wave, have been absolutely swept up by the news of Seungri and also Jung Jun Young the past few weeks. However, there is one really important case that is not getting as much attention as perhaps it should be and is in a really important state right now. Of course, I'm talking about the Chang Jae-yeon case. If you guys don't know what the Chang Jae-yeon case is, this is the video for you. Actress Chang Jae-yeon appeared in the drama Boys Over Flowers in early 2009 and was just starting off her acting career. But only a few months after her TV debut, on March 7, 2009, Chang Jae-yeon was found dead after committing suicide in her home. Initially, the police deemed that the cause of her death was suicide induced by depression. However, a week later, KBS, a national TV station in South Korea, retrieved documents that were written by Chang Jae-hyun herself. These documents were found burnt up in a trash can, and when they reported on the documents, the case was finally brought to national attention. Now on the documents were some shocking testimonies of her having forced to have sex with figures of high authority. According to the documents, she was forced to entertain VIPs when they were drinking, as well as have sex with them. She said at one point, a CEO beat her up, locking her up in a room and beating her on the head with a water bottle. She had to endure blackmailing and verbal assaults. The seven-page note listed at least 31 names of media executives from huge news outlets, CEOs, directors, and producers of national TV stations she was forced to have sex with. Zhang also claimed that she was forced to attend and entertain more than 100 drinking parties of these VIPs. Now, after these documents were made aware to the public, the police began their investigations. Five of these 31 figures listed in the document, along with seven others called up by Chang Jae-yeon's family, were investigated by the police in 2009, but uh, only two people were charged with anything, the ex-CEO and the ex-manager of Chang Jae-yeon's entertainment company. The former, the CEO, was sentenced to four months in prison and one year in probation for assault and assault only. The latter was sentenced to one year in prison and two years of probation, not for the Chang Jae-yeon case, but for the defamation of the CEO, the CEO that was sentenced to uh, prison for assault. What happened was the Chang Jae-yeon documents mentioned the poor working conditions of the entertainment company, including her having to pay for all the costs of her manager on top of receiving very little money. It also mentioned cases of physical and verbal assault from the CEO of the company to Chang Jae-yeon. However, the court deemed that when these documents were revealed, Chang Jae-yeon's ex-manager exploited the documents and Chang Jae-yeon's death in an effort to defame the CEO and thus was sentenced to prison for defamation of the CEO. Other than these two, no one on the document received a single charge for anything due to lack of sufficient evidence. Now the case came to a close and many suspected that there was a general lack of effort to make proper investigations due to so many high authorities being involved in this case, or potentially being involved in this case. The court did make a verdict in 2014 that the Chang Jae-yeon documents were not meddled with and was authentic. However, this did not lead to a reopening of the case to the dismay of many people. I mean, if you look at the list of figures in the document, they are huge, huge figures. I will not post the list due to potential danger of defamation lawsuits. However, you will find the list very easily with a quick Google search. So if you're curious about that, go look that up. Now in 2017, a special commission on the past misconduct by the prosecution uh, called the Committee of Past Affairs was launched by the Ministry of Justice in an effort to eradicate the corruption in the legal and judicial system of South Korea. Around the similar time frame, the impact of the Me Too movement was hitting Korea very hard and people filed a petition to reinvestigate the Chang Jae-yeon case because of it. And 230,000 people signed the petition and the reinvestigations began. On June 5, 2018, the Committee of Past Affairs launched the reinvestigation of Chang Jae-yeon's sexual abuse case. However, soon after the investigations restarted, the call history from Chang Jae-yeon's phone from the year before Chang Jae-yeon's death till her suicide was found to be lost. 
Initially, it was being stored at the prosecutor's office. However, this was found to be just missing, coincidentally. The call history was a very important piece of evidence in finding out the key figures of the Changjiao case, and there are strong suspicions that someone had taken and deleted this piece of evidence. On March 5th, 2019, a fellow actress named Yoon ji came out to the public for the first time ever in a face-to-face -face interview regarding the Chang Jae-yeon case. She is believed to be the sole witness in the Chang Jae-yeon sexual abuse case, as she was at the same place at the same time when Chang Jae-yeon was forced to entertain VIP drinking parties. She had testified as a potential witness for the Chang Jae-yeon case when it was initially being investigated. However, according to her recent interview she did on TBS, um, she stated that the investigations were not done thoroughly. She said she saw a journalist sexually abuse Chang Jae-yeon in front of her eyes, and she made consistent testimonies 13 times to the public about that during the investigations, but to no avail. After the case was closed, she was rejected from casting, and actually at one point, a director directly came up and said that they can't pick her uh, for a casting role because she had testified for Chang Jae-yeon. Also on the interview, Yoon ji claimed that the Chang Jae-yeon document was not written for the purposes of it being a will or a death note, but as evidence to legally terminate her unfair contract with her company. Yoon ji also went on to say that this case was not just a simple suicide, and urged thorough reinvestigation to the authorities. Now, thankfully, on March 18th, the Committee of Past Affairs extended the investigative activities for the Chang Jae-yeon case to be continued until the end of May. So we have about two more months to figure out this case. If the allegations on the documents are indeed true, then it's easy to understand why the case was not being dealt with a lot of sincerity by some of the news outlets or the investigators. It's a sign of how corrupt our society really is and how people in power they, they have it so easy to get away with very serious crimes. Now, if there's one thing that's mildly reassuring from all this is that the case is being reinvestigated now thanks to the people's eyes being on it. So there's just really one thing that we can do in our position right now, and that is keep our attention on this case. Make sure it doesn't get lost in a haze like it did 10 years ago.